Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to Asynchronous JavaScript Lesson 1. <laughs> okay then, so what the hell is Asynchronous JavaScript? Well, Asynchronous JavaScript is absolutely everywhere on the web. And if you write JavaScript a fair amount, then chances are you've written some asynchronous code at some point to fetch some data or something, but then maybe not known that it was asynchronous at the time. So in a very, very small nutshell, asynchronous code can start something now and then finish it later. That's what it's all about. So say, for example, we used an API such as the YouTube API, right? And we use that to go out and grab some data. But then instead of blocking the code and waiting for that API to respond, what asynchronous JavaScript does is allow the code to carry on until that API responds. And then when it does, then we can do something with the data. And this is in stark contrast to synchronous JavaScript. So let's just take a little look at that first of all. So the JavaScript code that you write runs on a single thread, which means it can only do one thing at a time. OK, and synchronous code waits for one action to complete before moving on to the next. So I've just done a little code example right down here, which is synchronous, right? And it's going to use an API which has a function called read sync. And this is going to go out, read some data, but it's going to do that synchronously. So it's not going to wait for some kind of callback function. It's going to wait until this completes and then move on to the next thing. Because remember, synchronous code waits for one action to complete before moving on to the next, right? So it's going to go out, read this, wait for it to complete, then it's going to log that to the console. Then it's going to go out to this, it's going to read this one synchronously, and then it's going to log that to the console. And you might be thinking, well, yeah, this is fine, it's just moving through things one at a time. However, what happens if this file is extremely large, okay, and it takes about 10 seconds to read it? then what you're doing is you're blocking up your code right here. It's not moving anywhere until this is fully read. So we have to hang around for 10 seconds before any of the other JavaScript is fired. OK, now that's not great. So that's why we use asynchronous code to kind of combat this. So this is an asynchronous version of doing the same thing. OK, this time we're using an API with a function called read async. And this is going to go and grab something asynchronously. So what this is doing is going to perform some kind of request whereby it's going to say, OK, well, I'm going to pass this onto a separate thread and you're going to go out and get that data. Right. And then I'm just going to carry on my thread through the code and carry on to the next function. And then when the other thread, which goes out and grabs this, returns with the data, then we can fire this callback function, which is going to log it to the article. So no longer are we waiting in line for this to be fully read before we move on to the next one. OK, what we're doing is passing this onto a separate thread. OK, and then the code thread is moving on to the next function. But wait a minute, I said that JavaScript only runs on one thread. And the distinction is this JavaScript that you write only runs on one thread. But then requests such as this are handed off to a separate thread which runs outside of JavaScript. So that frees up then the JavaScript thread to move on to other things. So let's have a, a look at this in a kind of diagram which better explains it. So this is an asynchronous version of the thread and the queue of functions. So say we have some code and we've got a lot of functions in it and each one of these things on the queue is a function. OK, so JavaScript makes this queue when it first reads your file and it goes through these functions one at a time. So it fires the first one, completes that moves on to the second one. Now, right here, we have an asynchronous uh, request. And what happens is it passes that request onto a separate thread outside of JavaScript, which goes and grabs some data. But in the meantime, on the JavaScript code thread, it can move on to the next function and carry on and carry on and carry on and carry on and carry on. And when this data is retrieved, the callback function from this request is added on to the end of the thread or the end of the queue. And then when the rest of the functions are fired, then it can fire this callback function with the data it's retrieved. So that's a nice way of doing things. Whereas the synchronous way would be like this. It fires, oops, gone back a slide there, fires the first function. Then it fires the second one, which is a synchronous uh, request this time. 
and it waits until that file is completely read and it's brought back to the JavaScript. So then it's delaying the rest of this code. It's blocking it right here. This might take 10 seconds or something. Then when it has that code, it fires the function it needs to do and moves on to the rest, okay? So this is clearly a better way to do it. And this is just one way to control the flow of this asynchronous request. There are other ways, right? And we're going to look at these ways in this tutorial series. So the first way, which I just showed you briefly, is a callback way. Yeah, this is good, but it can get messy. We're going to take a look at those in probably the next tutorial or a couple of tutorials time. Uh, promises are a better way to do things. And we're going to take a look at those two. And then generators are a new addition to ECMAScript 6, which are really awesome when it comes to asynchronous um, JavaScript. So we're going to take a look at those as well. So there we go, guys. That is your brief introduction as to what asynchronous code is all about. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those down below. Otherwise, I am going to see you in the very next tutorial.